Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all for the next lecture on inorganic chemistry of life, uh, principles and perspectives. Uh, let us uh, go through a recapitulation of what uh, I have taught in the previous class. Uh, in the previous class, the main theme of whatever I talked about is the metal ion is present in the enzymes as a coordination complex, which is surrounded by the protein. And as a result of that, the metal ion properties do change uh, uh, with respect to the type of protein that you have, protein conformation, uh, protein sequence, all different kinds of details of the protein as compared to the simple uh, uh, coordination complex or a, an ion in a aqueous medium. So, either of these if you compare. And this is a boon in disguise because by changing the protein surroundings and the nature of the protein itself, you can change altogether properties of the uh, enzyme. Okay, having uh, been talking a lot about the protein side chains, etc., I thought it is appropriate uh, for those uh, who may or may not know more details about this protein. So, I thought I will give some basic details of these, uh, very basic details of these, I mean, uh, proteins. And okay, so let us look at uh, first of all starting from the amino acid. So you see the amino acid is also referred as alpha amino acids. You have a carbon center with one hydrogen, and there are three substitutions, of which two uh, one is the carboxylic group, other is the uh, amine group, and this is common for all amino acids. And what is dif what differs from one amino acid to the other is the presence of this particular group. Okay. So, this particular group is R group. So, this is just uh, referred as R or in other words the side chain. So, this side chain varies from one amino acid to the other among the 20 naturally occurring amino acids. Of course, today 21 is also added which is selenocysteine uh, in the literature. Uh, otherwise, we can take uh, just as 20 amino acids. So, that is not a problem. And uh, so, you can see that uh, the same thing as uh, shown over there. And the carboxylic group losing a proton, amine group gaining a proton, this is referred such kind of a structure is called the Zwitter ionic structure. And this structure, uh, this Zwitter ionic or otherwise is dependent on the medium uh, pH. So, the pH of the medium. Uh, will have a control whether you have a COOH or COO minus NH2 or NH3 plus. Uh, this, uh, so, generally these are represented by the, uh, the kind of a structure this is trionic. Now, the different amino acids come out because of the change in the uh, R group. So, let us look at the next slide. So, in this slide, so what we are seeing? Having uh, known that there are so many different kinds of uh, amino acids are there, and these amino acids together can form. Yeah, let's let's come uh, once for these uh, set of the amino acids that we have. Uh, we have glycine, we have alanine, we have valine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, proline, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, and aspartic acid, glutamic acid, asparginine. Uh, uh, glutamine, cysteine, serine, threonine, histidine, lysine, arginine. I have already showed, uh, explained you the kind of a side chains that are present in two, uh, you know, lectures prior to this. If you look at those slides, you will find what are the side chains that you have. I have given in the form of uh, side chains the nonpolar, polar, polar with charged positively charged, negatively charged all this. I have also explained those uh, 6, 7, 8 different amino acids which are capable of binding to the metal centers is already talked to you. And in the protein literature, it is commonly uh, the amino acids are referred by a 3 letter code or a 1 letter code and it is better that you are 
familiar with these ones. The glycine is written as GLY, alanine is written ala, valine is written VAL, leucine is written LU, LEU, etc., etc. Aspartic as acid is written as ASP, etc. Now, if you look at this uh, one code uh, letters, then you would see that uh, the glycine is given as G, alanine uh, C is A. Uh, valine is V, leucine is L, etc. Now, if you come to glutamic acid, it, it cannot have G because G is already there. So, they have given E as the one. Aspartic acid A, that is fine. Aspargin A is already given. So, therefore, N is given here. So, glutamine and cysteine C, which is not used earlier. So, serine S, threonine T, histidine H. So, therefore, you have uh, a three letter code and one letter code and, and when you write a, a protein sequence you start using the one single uh, letter code and when you write small peptides you generally use the three letter code and that is all the difference is. Now, let us go back to uh, the slide as I said these are the amino acid uh, side chains and the side chains differ as polar, non-polar charged positive uh, negatively charged and they are all having ligating centers they can bind to the metal centers. Now, having known individual amino acid, let us look at the peptide. So, peptide a protein, protein is what? Protein is uh, the one which is formed with the peptide bonds. So, protein is the one which is formed from the peptide bonds. How is a peptide bond is formed? Peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids. So, carboxylic end of the one amino acid reacting with the amino end of the another amino acid and there is an elimination of water which is called dehydration reaction and as a result of that you will get a bond CONH. This is this bond is referred as the peptide bond or amide bond. If it is in a protein it is called peptide bond, if it is in simple uh, amides then they call it as an amide bond. So, they are one and the same. So, amino acid 1, amino acid 2. So, you can see R1 and R2. Sometimes it is R1 and R2 can be the same or R1 and R2 can be different. And as you can see that the carboxylic of this and the amine of this interacting together through the loss of water. So, you have an amine left over here and a carboxylic left over here. So, therefore, this is referred as the amine terminal or amino terminal carboxylic terminal or car carboxylic uh, C terminal. So, N terminal and C terminal. Let us look at little bit more or longer a bigger case. So, we have four different amino acids. The amino acid serine, valine, three, uh, tyrosine and uh, cysteine. So, these ones if you see here uh, the carboxylic of this amino acid reacting with the amine of this amino acid carboxylic of this one amine of that, carboxylic of this amine of that. So, if you have a condensation here, condensation here, condensation here, loss of water, loss of water, loss of water will give what 3 peptide bonds, 1 here, 1 here, 1 here. So, this whole thing has got 4 amino acids which is also referred as a tetrapeptide, amino acid 1, amino acid 2, amino acid 3, amino acid 4. How do you recognize the amino acid? From the C alpha center. So, C alpha center you can easily identify these ones. Okay. This is a tetrapeptide. So, if you extend it becomes a polypeptide. So, from several. Uh, so, now what you say each one of these amino acid is called a building block in this. So, you have a building block. Now, after this is formed what you have? This end you have amine, this end you have a carboxylic. But otherwise, there is no other amine and carboxylic. You only have COnH, COnH. So, therefore, what is important? Only the side chains. So, in a huge protein, let us say having 100 amino acids, 200 amino acids, 1000 amino acids, then what, what is important? The important thing is that side chains in all those uh, cases. So, let us re-look at this is a tetrapeptide, it has a peptide bonds over here and side chains. In a huge uh, polypeptide like protein having 100 to 100,000 amino acids, these will become terminals and the entire protein will have the side chains coming up.
So, the same thing as you as I talked to you earlier you start with the amino acid combined with one more amino acid combined with one more amino acid combined with one more. So, you can start stitching the amino acids together uh, to form a, a peptide bond and the peptide bond connects these amino acids. So, here you can see one such polypeptide uh, having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 amino acid residues. So, you can call this as a decapeptide. So, in this you have a glycine, leucine, etcetera, etcetera, all are there. So, uh, in the junction to these is a peptide bond, in junction to these peptide bond, peptide bond. So, you have left with one amine part and one carboxylic part. So, the amine part is referred as N terminal, carboxylic part is uh, referred as the C terminal. This is important because later stage we will come across the N terminal and C terminal uh, uh, situations where we talk about what is happening at this uh, over the other. Now, you have taken the amino acids, you have connected them together like you take uh, uh, flowers and make a garland. So, let us take uh, different kinds of flowers, flowers with a different nature or flowers with a different kind of a colors. Then you take flower 1 with red color, then put next one is a green color, the next one may be yellow color or again go back to red etcetera. So, you are connecting them together like this one. So, the, the uh, this polypeptide is nothing like a uh, nothing but like a garland which is made from flowers of different colors or flowers of different types. Now, such a polypeptide uh, it converts into some kind of a matured level of the protein which I will come in a while this is called structure. So, the structure of this uh, of the protein is formed and this is really ready for any function. So, uh, I, I will explain the things connecting these ones. So, an amino acid a polypeptide to a protein and that is how we uh, move from one to the other to the other. So, this is just simple garland but this is not that this is a decorated one. So, these decorations are coming from where I will explain in a while in this. So, in order to explain the protein structure that you have seen in the previous slide or in other words I referred it as a decoration and we need to introduce the four parameters. One is the primary structure, uh, the, the other is secondary structure, third is tertiary structure, fourth is quaternary structure. So, these are the different stages of this protein and we will go through this. So, the primary structure is the one where you connect the amino acids together to make a polypeptide. The secondary structure is the one where such a polypeptide will not stay like a uh, long thread, there will be some kind of a rearrangement, structural rearrangements and these structural rearrangements in, in various forms I will explain in a while. And such structural rearrangements taking a shape in the entire protein and the protein takes a, a, a topological structure is called the tertiary structure. And such tertiary structured units join together in a particular symmetry uh, or symmetry element will result in a quaternary structure. I will again uh, explain these things as we keep going through the next few slides. Okay, let us look at the first part of the, um, of the structure which is called primary structure the protein. So, what uh, the primary structure the protein has got uh, this is coming from one amino acid, second amino acid, third amino acid etcetera, etcetera. So, what do you have? You have a, uh, uh, a C alpha center, another C alpha center, C alpha center, C alpha center, C alpha center, C alpha center and each one of these have got a peptide bond you see that uh, COnH, 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 COnH. So, this whole thing is referred is, is the uh, protein chain. So, A is connected to B is connected to C is connected to D etcetera. So, that is that kind of a uh, sequence is referred as the primary structure. So, in a protein when we know primary structure means we know the order in which the amino acids are connected. There are ways and means by which one can do that this is not the stage where I will explain I would explain some other stage because you take a protein you hydrolyze you start detecting you can find selectively hydrolyze and find which is the first amino acid which is the next amino acid which is the third amino acid etcetera etcetera. These are all very well known in the literature, but those are outside the scope of this particular course uh, let us not too much worry about it. So, 
the here is a particular structure of the protein taken primary structure of a bovine serum albumin. So, it is a serum albumin protein from the bovine source. So, bovine is cow, the cow source and serum is blood and the albumin is the albumin like protein and in that you have a, a chain structure shown here. You have the each amino acid is connected here and this number shows the 5th, 10th, 12th, 15th, 20th etcetera and there is another one. So, this is just to indicate the primary structure enough this much information. This is a primary structure and now uh, once the primary structure is formed you can have the secondary structure of the protein. So, what is the secondary structure? So, this will bring stable arrangement of the amino acid residues in the backbone to give some kind of a structural pattern okay? and that will uh, bring to the uh, local conformation too. So, the secondary structures which are commonly seen in proteins are two major ones. One is the alpha helix, other is the beta sheet. The third one is the left out portion which is called the random coil kind of a portion. So, means no specific structure, it is open kind of thing. So, alpha helix, beta sheet and then the portions which are connecting these ones. Now, we will look at each of these what is alpha helix, what is beta sheet etcetera uh, in the next few slides. Okay, alpha helix as you can see uh, is that uh, in this particular protein uh, we have seen earlier a polypeptide. Now, uh, twisted the polypeptide like this and goes this way and goes this way and goes this way. Why should it twist? So, this twisting as you can see there is some connectivity here and there is some connectivity here and there is some connectivity here. So, that means these connectivities are dominating. So, these connectivities are dictating this particular polypeptide chain to take this kind of a shape and this shape is referred as the alpha helix. So, what are these connectivities? These connectivities are C O is carbonyl, N H is the N H moiety. So, each peptide amide bond has got C O N H. So, C O of this with N H of this, C O of this with N H of this. Okay? So, similarly of this. So, you have C O N H kind of a hydrogen bonds. Where are these hydrogen bonds? If you take nth residue and to the n plus four, fourth residue, these two are connected. Okay? And such a kind of things are found in the alpha helix. And the one which is shown here is a right handed alpha helix because we are talking about all the L amino acids. If you go to D amino acids, the situation will change, let us not too much worry. And what is the, you see when you go from here to here, you are bringing a kind of a bend. So, this bend is also referred as a torsion. So, on some bonds you have to, you have to twist, twist and torsions. So, if you do such kind of a twist or torsion, then you will get this bend and those angles are given over here. So, one of the angle is C C alpha, other angle is N C alpha. Okay? So, these are the two angles that you get because these two bonds are the uh, single bonds. So, the single bonds will have a rotation because of this rotations this uh, kind of a structure takes. So, in this alpha helix there is 3.6 residues uh, each helix turn has got 3.6 residues okay? and, uh, and there are uh, 14 atom hydrogen bonds in this. If you start counting between the CO and the NH of that you will find. So, the hydrogen bonds are shown over there with more clarity here. Uh, so, this is very commonly found in many proteins, in large number of proteins. Okay. The example that is shown here on the right side is bovine serum albumin, you can see this. So, the same thing if I put a color it will look like this. Uh, there are different kinds of colors because they are coming from different regions. You do not need to worry at this stage why the color is different. So, all that you need to see is you can see this spiral kind of thing. So, this spiral is nothing but a helical. So, these helicals are alpha helical. So, as you would see the total protein is dominant by the uh, helical structures. The small threads you can see, the small threads have no specific structure. They can be called as a random coil kind of structure. And this structure anybody can see in the PDB uh, protein data bank with this number. If you go, you will get this particular protein structure. You can get uh, this one too. 
Okay. So, I hope you understand oh, the one of the uh, secondary structures is alpha helix and the alpha helix is stabilized by the CO NH hydrogen bonds of n to n plus fourth and that is the uh, driving force and this hydrogen bond as you know is stabilizes the structure because the hydrogen bond when it is formed there is a uh, uh, the energy being uh, being released. Okay. So, delta H is minus. So, therefore, total delta G will come to the minus favorable. So, therefore, such structure is formed favorably in the proteins. And go to the second uh, category of this mentioned beta sheets. Beta sheets are formed not by the, a twist, they are they are just in their stagger in their uh, uh, jigjag kind of a fashion, but between one such unit another such strand you can say. Uh, so, therefore, you have a COnH, another COnH, another COnH, uh, COnH this side, this side you have all these kind of things. So, such kind of a structures are called um, uh, the beta sheets. So, the beta sheets you can see the uh, n for this uh, thing, this side is n, this side is carboxylic and for this uh, strand this side is nitrogen or n terminal, this side is uh, C terminal. So, therefore, n terminal to T side C terminal and C terminal to n terminal. So, that kind of a thing gives you uh, the sheet type of a structure which is called the uh, anti parallel beta sheet. On the other hand, both the n to C and n to C or C terminal n terminal, C terminal n terminal, they are exactly aligned it is called parallel. So, it is called parallel beta sheet. And just because of this parallel and anti parallel obviously, you will find the corresponding sheet has a different properties. As you can see that this looks quite different from this one. This is coming from the parallel one, this comes from the anti parallel one. So, parallel beta sheet, anti parallel beta sheet uh, kind of a structures. So, what I have been telling you about the beta sheet structures. Uh, parallel beta sheet and anti uh, parallel beta sheet anti parallel beta sheet and this only the alignment is uh, n terminal to c terminal and c terminal to n terminal here on this side both are aligned uh, the both the n terminals and both the c terminals are uh, aligned together and this also stabilizes uh, the structure and this is also found in number of proteins uh, too uh, you can see in a little better way here this zigzag uh, repetitive structure and you have seen the hydrogen bonds uh, between the neighboring polypeptide chains. So, this is referred as the structure which resembles the pleats, okay? the pleat kind of a structure. Okay? So, therefore, the two types uh, anti parallel and parallel. There is one example is shown over there. Okay? This uh, protein has hardly any kind of helix and it is mainly has uh, sheets and these sheets are shown over there here. The sheets in the form of green color, in the blue color, light uh, uh, light blue color and the orange, red etcetera you see that. So, but all of them are beta sheet kind of structures. So, this is uh, a, a protein which is uh, uh, lentil uh, in which is uh, from lectin protein is a concavalin A. We, right now, you do not need to worry about the name of this protein is a beta sheet structure is dominating and uh, this can also be obtained from the uh, protein data bank. Uh, protein uh, data bank PDB number is the uh, number is given here protein data bank. So, if you go into the internet and uh, run this number under the protein data bank, you will get this structure you can see that. So, this structure is primarily the, uh, the beta sheet structure. Okay. Is, it, uh, uh, is it that you should have uh, in a protein all alpha helices and you should have only beta sheets? That is not correct. There are proteins where both the alpha helicals or beta sheets both are present too. You can see an example here. So, this protein has got not only uh, alpha helical structures, but also beta sheets. This is primarily alpha helical, this is primarily beta sheet, but this one has got both of these two. Now, so having seen these uh, 
uh, alpha helical beta sheets that means they are folding the protein in various forms. So, once you fold the entire protein you get into a kind of a topological structure and which is in turn stabilized by secondary structures. And the secondary structures are dictated by the protein sequence that you have and the turns that it can take place. So, therefore, you in, the, in a tertiary structure you have a topological features of the total structure. So, this is shown as a tertiary structure. So, tertiary structure uh, is a superstructure having uh, its uh, subset is the secondary structures together and the primary structure of course, is involved. Okay. So, several secondary structures together gives the tertiary structure for the total uh, protein. The example shown over here is uh, a myoglobin uh, protein. Of course, we are going to look into the details of this at a later stage and this is the portion where you have a heme uh, containing portion. So, this is not the appropriate time to highlight the heme part of it, but otherwise we can see this is the tertiary structure of that. Okay. Let us uh, uh, look at the quaternary structure. Now, you have looked at the tertiary structure in the previous slide uh, for the myoglobin and where it has one polypeptide chain and it has interior uh, heme protein. Now, you take uh, four such units and try to arrange. One of this is this uh, uh, light orangish and a bit darker uh, uh, you know brownish orangish kind of color and then you have a pink and darker pink. So, there are four. So, these four each one of these is the uh, the uh, polypeptide chain that I have shown you in case of myoglobin 10. So, therefore, you have put the four of these, but these are put in a diff in a particular specific manner. So, you have a symmetry related two of them are towards us or uh, in uh, towards us and two of them are towards the back side. So, therefore, you have a structure which is being uh, built in in the form of a uh, symmetry. So, this is symmetrically based uh, arrangement of tertiary structures is nothing but a quaternary structure. In some proteins the tertiary structure and quaternary structures are same, same subunit only one subunit. In some proteins there can be two subunits, there can be three subunits, there can be four, there can be five, there can be six variety of things are there. So, therefore, when you have more than one subunit they are arranged together in the form of uh, a, a, in, a, in, the, in a particular symmetry and results in a quaternary structure too. Another example is shown over here you can see there is a 1, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth and sixth and there are 6 more on the back side. So, this protein has got a 12 subunits and the 12 subunits of which you can see the top 6 and the bottom 6 on the back. And these are also coming from the metalloprotein called glutamine synthase, uh, synthetase, glutamine synthetase, where manganese and uh, uh, magnesium ions are present, manganese and magnesium ions are present. So, this is again the quaternary structure of another protein. Now, what have we learned? The primary structure, the secondary structure, the tertiary structure, and the quaternary structure. So, all of these obviously are important. Okay. Now, let me put uh, them together uh, in one slide and explain you. So, what do you see on the left end, left extreme is shown like A1, A2, A3, A4 means amino acid 1, amino acid 2, amino acid 3, they are connected that means it is a polypeptide. So, it is a polypeptide they are connected in this particular fashion therefore, it is a primary structure. So, primary structure or sequence one and the same. So, the amino acid residues are connected in this fashion. The secondary structure is the one where in this particular example we have shown alpha helical, but you can have beta sheet also. So, which I explained you. So, they take these turns because of stabilizing forces and to make this you have to make a twist and which is something some diagonal angle twist. And these twists are made with respect to N C alpha C C alpha. Okay. So, C C alpha and N C alpha these two are single bonds therefore, single bond rotation does not cost much energy. Therefore, that is what that energy is uh, supplied by the stabilization of the hydrogen bond. So, hydrogen bond gains the energy and twisting requires the energy. 
So, there is some expenditure, there is some uh, gain. So, so, therefore, net there is a gain in this one. So, therefore, second structures are built. And tertiary structure is this kind of a secondary structures uh, running across the entire protein uh, is called the tertiary structure. And such proteins are joined together in a particular uh, kind of a um, uh, the uh, symmetry and that results in the quaternary structure. So, secondary, ter primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary is as an example only one is shown secondary structure, but you can have other ones also. This is protein structure hierarchy. Uh, this is very important because we will be later on talking about the protein function uh, everything. The protein function comes not from the primary structure, not from secondary structure, it comes from the tertiary structure and can even come from the quaternary structure, but not from primary and secondary the protein functions coming into these things. So, in this lecture primarily I have focused on explaining you what is an amino acid, how, what is a peptide bond, what is a primary sequence, what is a secondary se uh, structure, what is a tertiary structure, what is a quaternary structure. And I have also told you just by the having the primary structure and secondary structure function is not come, function comes from the tertiary structure and quaternary. In some case polypeptides or proteins tertiary structure and quaternary structures are same where only single uh, polypeptide chain is there otherwise they are different. So, you can have tertiary structure showing the function, quaternary structure showing the uh, function. So, the next in the next class we will look at the other biomolecules uh, like uh, nucleic acids etcetera and we will also look at the processes like protein synthesis and other biological parameters. Thank you.